Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger here, and it's time to take a look at a new champion build video. Today we're going to be playing Aatrox in top lane, as where you will usually find him. You'll also find him in the jungle sometimes as well, he works out there too. But uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about him today, and his build, and maybe some tactics. We'll talk about his runes and masteries, really cover everything he has to offer as a champion. And uh, we'll go ahead and start off with level 1 stuff. There's a few different starting items you can do. I did longsword and pots. You can do boots pots. You can do uh, red pot and pots. You can do all types of things you really want to do. So pick whatever works for your lane. If you need to do cloth armor and pots, if you're up against a heavy AD champion in top lane, you want the armor, not a bad idea either. So um, early on, I just did longsword pots. This helps me build towards a vampire scepter pretty quick early on in the game. So that's what we're going to actually do when I go head back to base right now. Um, he had the red pot and pot, so right now he's got a little bit increased damage and he was hurting me quite a bit, so I'll get a little bit of health coming back to me now with that Vampiric Scepter. I also picked up a ward in case of Shaco because of ganks from him, and hopefully I can see those coming. And then I also picked up a couple more health pots, but luckily my kit does help me stay alive while I'm in lane. We'll go ahead and talk about that right now. At level 1, you can take either your Blades of Torment, which is your E ability, which is a slow, in case you want to fight him that way, or at level 1, what I usually take is your Blood Thirst slash Blood Price. That is your W ability. What happens here is you can toggle it on or off. Um, whenever you have it toggled off, that's your Blood Thirst, I believe, and what happens there is every third hit, you uh, deal some bonus damage, I think, and you get life back on that. And then when you toggle it on, that's going to deal increased damage uh, based off 100% of your attack damage. And every third attack is uh, going to cost you some of your life. So you turn it on and toggle that on when you want to deal that bonus damage and really hurt them a lot, usually when you're fighting them quite heavily. But uh, all the other times, you just want to bl you leave Blood Thirst on, so you just start getting life back while you are in the lane. Um, obviously, you can still use Blood Thirst if you're getting into fights, um, and you want to just get life back that way if you're not too worried about getting massive amounts of damage off on them by using Blood Price. So um, that kind of comes down to a personal preference mostly. And then um, you're going to be maxing out that ability first. Then at level 2 or 3, depending on what you like to do and what order you like to max things, you're going to put a point into your Dark Flight. That's your, or your Q ability. You uh, jump up in the air and you smash down. I just did it there and missed him because he actually slid underneath me while I was trying to do it. We're going to get a little bit of a fight here and I'll use my ultimate to pick up a kill on the Renekton, so that'll help me out while I'm laning. And here I can switch back over to the Blood um, Thirst and get almost all my life back pretty quick. So you can actually stay in lane quite a long time, especially if you're not getting harassed really heavily. Um, but Renekton does hurt, so I've been taking some damage from him. But you can get a lot of life back by just using Blood Thirst, so that's what we're doing in lane um, when we're trying to push, and that's what we're doing overall. And then finally we'll talk about his... Um, Let's talk about his ultimate called Massacre. Massacre is going to do a lot of crazy damage, basically, to sum it up quickly. For the next 12 seconds, you gain 40, 50, and 60% bonus attack speed and 175 bonus attack range. So you have actually increased range. Pretty nice uh, for attacking them because you have a little bit of range on it. Going to pick up another kill there because uh, of a good um, kind of in-lane gank. We already had Uder in lane, so he just kind of initiated that while I was coming back. So... Um, pick up another quick kill, also very helpful. Early on in this game, though, I decided to go with my Ninja Tabby Boots because against Renekton, that's helpful. Obviously, if their team has a lot of magic damage and a lot of stuns and CC, you're going to want Merc Treads because of the tenacity built into those and the magic resist is really good. Um, but the first main item we're going to try to build today is going to be the Blade of the Ruin King. We do have that Cutlass, and we also are getting a little bit of attack speed now to build towards that item. And that's what we're working on first. It's kind of your main core item, regardless of how the rest of your build goes out. You're probably going to want that for in all that increased damage, the lifesteal, the attack speed, and the percentage damage done to them based on their life. So that's going to be your first main key item in the game. So uh, that's what we are working at right there. Um, so we talked about Massacre as well, which is your ultimate. It's really awesome. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just pretty awesome. Does a lot of damage. Activate it to kill people. Um, you're gonna, we'll talk about maxing just one more time because we didn't finish it off. Obviously, you're going to max your W out first. Max your E out second and your Q out last. You just need the Q for the jump, um, not really for the damage. And then um, we can actually go over his passive too, Blood Well, which um, whenever you use an ability that costs health, it restores blah, blah, blah to your Blood Well. If you have maximum Blood Well, then you, or not even maximum, if you have Blood Well up, basically when you die, you will just not take damage for the next, I believe, three seconds, and then it restores a certain amount based on the Blood Well's uh, pool, maybe, or whatever. Basically, you just come back to life. 
I'm simplifying. Um, if it's not up and you die, then you die, which is sad. Gonna get into a little bit of a fight here and help the team out. Um, and get slowed a lot and kill some minions and pick up a handful of assists, which is helpful for me. I'll take assists. Um, and that's what we're doing. We do have the Blade of the Ruined King finished off now, so we have lots of damage there. And, uh, just very helpful now when we are going to start getting to some fights. Here I can see Renekton. I'm actually just going to jump over there, slow him down real quick, and pick up another kill on him. So, uh, then we're able to push this mid turret with really out anybody contesting us since Lux is the only one up. She's smart enough to know not to sacrifice herself for a tower that's going to fall regardless of what she's going to do. So, I'm um, going to head back up to top, obviously, and keep farming away as I can. And uh, we'll go ahead and keep talking about everything else. So like I was saying, W first, E second, Q, max that out last, and obviously your ultimate 6, 11, and 16 on that. Now when it comes down to those masteries and the masteries page, you're going to probably want to go with a more offensive style page. You're going to go with uh, probably a 2190, and you're going to put 21 in the offense, obviously, and you're going to pick up everything that's going to give you increased damage. It'll give you some uh, armor penetration, a lot of other nice stats, and they'll just help with uh, increased damage overall. Um, we're going to find them out over here and uh, try to get into a little bit of a fight with them. I'm trying to get this Lux, but I step on a trap, which is unfortunate. And uh, we'll go assist the team with the Ren... Rengar. Not even Rengar. Renekton. Too much Ren stuff. That's interesting. We're going to kill him again. We should just keep killing him for a Rampage. So, uh, picked up another kill, which obviously helps us build. We're going to go do that in a little bit. We should head back there in just a second. I think we have some gold to spend. And we can continue on with the build. Now, interestingly enough, there's a lot of ways you can kind of play Aatrox. But there's one way... You need to remember to play Aatrox. A lot of people I've seen go full out all damage. Just, they're doing everything from Black Cleaver and Hydra, and they're doing Blade of the Ruined King and Infinity Edge and getting their boots. As much as that is great for crazy amounts of damage up front, because of his unique kit where you kind of jump in and you are kind of a frontline brawler, you need some kind of survivability. You really do. You don't even need that much damage because when you activate his ultimate, you get so much from it anyways that you don't have to worry about, like, building just insane amounts of damage. It's obviously fun to, but it's not necessary, and you'll actually live longer if you build a little defensively. So we're actually going to do a little bit of that after we get two damage items. So we need some survivability as the game will go on, or else you will get blown up. You'll fall into your passive, and the minute you get out of it in a team fight, you're just going to get blown up again. You're not going to live through it. So you really do need to build in some defensive items to kind of make his kit work longer and better for you in the long run so um full damage might be fun if you're just completely crushing him but realistically if you want to do really well with him you're going to want to pick up some of these items that we'll go over in a second that last time i was back at base though we did pick up a pickaxe and another long sword going to pick up a couple assists there as ari finishes them off we're gonna have to run away because she gets uh, caught out then afterwards but we uh picked up the pickaxe like i said in that long sword we're going to be building that into the last whisper very helpful item for just getting through all of their armor and uh it will help us out just in the long run we're gonna go ahead and just solo this dragon real quick and uh help the team out with some gold there since we had uh wards down gonna have to jump over that wall though get away just play it safe and that's one nice thing about his jump too not only is it good for getting initiations happening it is for get it good for getting away um so i used it a couple times earlier i was getting sniped and uh lux was trying to alt me and zed was chasing me not too long ago and you can see how i was uh, kind of maneuvering around and jumping over walls just to get away i also can flash too so you can use both of them just to get some distance between you and uh it makes it a little bit harder for you to get caught especially if you just keep that up for either hard initiations on kills or for very defensive purposes. So there's a few different ways you can use that. Here, I'm going to go take these, and actually I'm going to die to Shaco because I, like, I don't know. I think I stopped paying attention or something. But um, I will get shut down, but whatever. Shaco could use the help. He's playing Shaco. Um, so we are dead now, which, you know, happens when you die. And we finished off that last Whisper, and the next... Thing that I am building, if we can see in the tiny box, there we go, and that's back up on the left. We have a giant spell now, which is going to obviously help us with increased life, which is just great for durability. And then we also have a warden's mail, which is going to help us with increased armor and some other unique passes from that. When they are attacking, it slows them and all that fun stuff. So we are going to kill Lux really quick because she deserves to die for playing Lux. And we are going to continue to push onward and outward. I think now with her dead, are we going to try to do maybe a Baron? No, they know we're coming. So we have to hold off for now. Maybe try to get them caught out again and see if we can push some lanes. Luckily, we have Twitch pushing bottom, so he will take a turret while we are kind of distracting mid while we have a 4v5 advantage. But 
I believe Lux is now back up, so we have to be careful about that again. Um, so, like I was saying, here comes the defensive side of the build. You're going to need to pick up some of that just so you can use all the damage that you have the potential to use. And uh, we're going to go ahead and do that by picking up Randuin's Omen, which will help us with, you know, that tankiness, giving us health um, and some armor and the ability to slow them all down in a team fight because we can activate that and slow them down. We are going to also jump in here and go for Zed and Caitlyn, mostly. Obviously, I'm going to try to peel Renekton off of them if I can because Renekton is, you know, he's Renekton, he's tanky, does a lot of damage. And uh, Zed's going to go to town actually picking up tons of kills because Zed does damage, but he will die to Sona and... Sona will also kill Renekton. Whatever, I'm over it. But we're able to push now. We'll pick up the inhibitor and obviously a little bit more uh, farm. Don't really have to worry about that. We can get away there. But we picked up a lot of assists. Assists, never a bad thing. We're 7, 1, and 10 right now. Um, but that is what we're working on right now. We'll head back to base in a second and finish off that omen. Like I said, that's really, really helpful. Now there's another item I don't build this game that I am highly going to recommend after this point because it helps you out in multiple ways. And we'll go ahead and talk about that right now. Um, right now, we did just finish off the Omen. And now, apparently, we're AFK or something because I'm slow. And, oh, no, I know what I did. Um, I pick up my next item because this is the one I'm going to interchange. This item is going to help you with some damage, and it's going to help you with some tankiness. But it's kind of an in-between. Now, if I needed more magic resist from, you know, because of their team. All my team's dead, by the way, so I have to let them take this. Diving at them right now would be just a waste of life. Now, here comes Twitch. I'm going to jump in, try to get in here to focus. This is going to be a pretty much a sacrifice. I am going to get in here, though, and go into the passive. There it is. Come out of it. We're going to go ahead and kill Shaco, but luckily we have Twitch in the back killing some people. Very helpful. Um, or killing a person or people, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm trying to sacrifice that, but luckily, since we did kill a couple of them, that is going to give my team the opportunity to go take Baron, um, because we have the point, or not point advantage, but the uh, people advantage. We have more up, so we're able to take that and secure gold for all of us, so um, the sacrifice was worth it, and occasionally you're going to have to do that. It's one nice thing about being a little bit tankier, too, but like I was talking about with this item that we're building towards, it's kind of an in-between. It's going to get us tanky and give us damage. It is going to be, in fact, the frozen mallet, so uh, it if I didn't go for Frozen Mount this game, what I probably would have done next, if they had more magic damage on their team and I needed to resist some of that, I would have gone with a Spirit Visage. Very helpful with the health regen and the magic resist, but not only that, it does help give you the increased um, regeneration effects with the passive, so whenever you are lifestealing, you are going to be getting more back for your lifesteal that you have. So it's a good item on him, and it works really well, and it'll help still get you some of that durability. So like I said, we need to focus on picking up a little bit of defense because it's just going to be helpful for you to be able to use your kit and fight. So, we're going to uh, probably get into a fight as Udyr is going balls deep right now. And uh, here comes Renekton. And we're going to go ahead and, I think, try to fight him a little bit. Obviously, and we're going to get stuck down. And uh, kind of a weird fight going on right now. I'm going to go for the Caitlyn because she should die as their carry. Get rid of her. And uh, the rest of our team will kind of just back off now after Zed kills Ari with his burst. And, uh, we just lost a turret. How sad. What else are we working on in this fight? We also have, I don't know if you've noticed this, but in lane we had Renekton jumping up and down on his recall constantly. And, uh, what we're really doing right now is we're just kind of pressuring with the minions that we have. And, uh, our slight advantage of being ahead this game. Although it is actually not too unbalanced when it comes to gold. We only have a 3,000. Uh, gold advantage right now, so nothing crazy. Sona picking up another kill because it's, you know, the game station. He does what he wants. And we're going to go ahead and try to keep pushing. We are going to get this tower nice and low, but we're not going to finish it off right away. I don't know if we get scared away. Oh, we feared. That's part of the issue. And then he comes back out. We're actually going to try to jump back over here and get rid of this, but Twitch will too at the same time I go for it. And now, Shaka will die. And I think Renekton might kill somebody. Maybe. Maybe not. Probably. Yep. And then he will die again. Because he needs to die. What else are we talking about? Okay, we are going to go for that frozen mallet or spirit visage. That's what we're covering right now. And then finally, at the end of the build, there's a few different directions to go once again. If you get to extreme late game build, which we are currently kind of at, we're going to go for our last item. I'm actually going to go for a ravenous hydra. They're not doing tons of damage to me. Uh, this game and ravenous hydra is a great item on him. So um, if you want to pick that up You can also consider a bloodthirster very similar, but different 
Um, so Ravenous Hydra is what I'm going to try to finish this out with. If you wanted to be absolutely ridiculous, there's two other methods you could go. You could go with a Warmog's Armor because of even more health for survivability. Although if they all have Blade of the Rune Kings, it's going to hurt a little bit. But uh, the other thing is get a Guardian Angel. So you can basically come back twice with your Blood Well. So a few different options there, really. But the Hydra would be great for rounding out your damage. You are pretty tanky right now. You're not a tank, but you are definitely a brawler slash bruiser. So you can get in there, and uh, you don't have to be afraid to jump in. And when you jump in, you will hurt them. It will be fun. You can jump in like this, knock them all up as Sona alts them, and just smash their faces in with whatever you have up. We're just going to go ahead and try to finish this. I'm trying to peel for the Twitch again, although he was annoying this game. But we're going to go ahead and finish out the game. That's going to be the build and all of the fun stuff behind it. Everything's listed in the description as it usually is. But if you have any questions, you can put down below. And other than that, I'll just see all of you in the next build video. Into a little bit of a fight, blow Skarner up, and then work on the Diana, who will also die, picking up a quick double kill.